NerdRotic.com. Happy Christmas, Whovians, and welcome back to the NerdRotic channel. My name is Gary Beekler, and I come to you from NerdRotic.com. I hope you are all having a wonderful holiday season, whether you celebrate Christmas or whether you don't celebrate Christmas. I think we can all agree that we liked the Doctor Who Christmas special. I'm not a religious person at all, and I loved the Doctor Who Christmas special. It was part of our family tradition, but it's gone now. Not saying I'm complaining that much with the current series being as bad as it was. I'm kind of okay with us not getting one, but I don't think we're going to get one in the future either. In reference to that, let's go back in time to what Stephen Moffat said about what will probably be the last Doctor Who Christmas special. There was a big glitch, which was Christmas. I was going to leave at the end of series 10. I had my finale planned and what I wanted to do with it. I had a good notion of that. Then I learned at the drinks event somewhere that Chris didn't want to start with Christmas. So at that point, they were going to skip Christmas. There'd be no Christmas special and we would have lost the slot. Doctor Who would have lost the slot if we hadn't done a Christmas special because Christmas Day is now so rammed. So I said, probably four glasses of red wine in, I'll do Christmas. And then we had to persuade Peter Capaldi that's how we were leaving. Then I had to work out how he could get mortally injured in one episode and spend an hour regenerating on Christmas Day, which I hopefully have done. The only thing you managed to do, Stephen, was half-ass a Christmas special, half-ass a great doctor's exit, and give us a first doctor who's a sexist. So thanks a lot. See you later. Now, when it comes to Chris Chibnall, he has now turned down two Christmas specials. What's up with that, Chris? And the BBC? Well, we haven't heard anything from them. The only thing they keep rolling out is that old Stephen Moffat quote. According to the outlet, the writers have simply run out of ideas for christmas theme episodes after so many years of doing them. Which is fair enough. No, it is not. For a writer to say that they've run out of ideas means they need to go home and quit because they're done. It's not like we didn't see this coming either, as ex-showrunner Stephen Moffat had expressed the problem they were having with the specials in the past. Saying at that point, I sort of think we mind and possibly overmind every single thing we could have about Christmas and Doctor Who. And the last time, we more or less ignored it. I searched far and wide to find some kind of statement, something from the BBC or Chris Chibnall or Jodie Whittaker explaining why they moved the Christmas special to New Year's Day, and I found absolutely nothing. Okay, let's be honest. It was about 20 minutes of Googling, but seriously, when I finally found an article that said, why is there no Doctor Who Christmas special this year? I'm all, oh, finally, we're going to get some answers. The answer was literally, the Doctor Who fans are in for a special treat for the first day of the new year. And they just repeated the Stephen Moffat quote again. So listen, that leaves us all to speculate. My speculation is the BBC is too damn politically correct to do a Christmas special. It's too much of a specific religious holiday to sell to a global audience. And until I hear different, that is my belief. Now, I've heard rumors that there was a production delay, but that's just rumors. And really, if you've watched season 11, do you doubt me? So we are solution-based here. So enough of that. You've heard our criticisms, Doctor Who. You've heard our criticisms of Jodie Whittaker. We have ideas. We have actual ideas, which are better than no ideas. You get that, BBC? This is something you should have done. Shame on you. We just asked some of our viewers to submit some Christmas ideas. I was expecting 10 or 20. We got hundreds. Big shout out to a subscriber, a patron, and a friend, Kato Roan. This video would not be possible without you, so thank you very much. And this is all from our comments section. Here we go. From Mars Probe, two weeks ago, Christmas special idea, the Doctor and her companions arrive on Earth in December in the year 2218 to show them what Christmas is like in the future, but they find the world strangely free of any trappings of the season. Strangely, none of the adults seem to know something is amiss while the children are upset that Christmas seems to be canceled. Our heroes eventually learn of a mysterious outpost on Mars that is transmitting a peculiar signal towards Earth. There, they find a miserable individual whose parents always denied her a happy Christmas and has therefore decided no other children should be allowed to experience what she was denied. As such, she has created a device that transmits a signal, causing all of the adults to completely forget Christmas exists. It's now up to the doctor to convince the lonely woman to reinstate Christmas. After saving Christmas, the woman, whose name is, shall we say, Gillian Roberta Inch, is invited back to Yaz's family's place to enjoy the kind of Christmas she's always missed out on. So really, it's just the Grinch, but with a silly brainwashing plot thrown in. Well done. From Marin V.D. Stara, two weeks ago. Hmm, what would I do as a Christmas special? Remember Jenny, the doctor's daughter? I would have her being used as an energy source time lord by an unknown but mighty race. 
have her on Christmas Day think slash wish for the Doctor. Let the TARDIS bring the Doctor to that planet. The Doctor figures out that Jenny has been hunted for a while, and before she rescues Jenny, reveals herself as a much bigger energy source so the alien race will start hunting her instead of Jenny good overall theme for next year. In the end, the Doctor has a holiday with her real family this time. Add in some jokes about Jenny not being sure about having a mother or a father. Maybe even include some of the real life situations by saying, I like the way you looked. I could have married that face. And done. Ha <laughs> ha, well done. From Jokers 79, I love this concept. Begins with a man carving toys for kids. Then he is called away to the battlefield with the Daleks. The Doctor learns... During the Time War, before the Time Lock, a Time Lord soldier kept reliving the same battle and the same night, comforting kids as the battle was repeated over and over again, with both sides wanting victory. He got injured in this battle, and in a confused post-regeneration state, mixed in with some PTSD, has come to Earth and became Santa Claus. That would be brilliant. From our friend Gamer Gambit two weeks ago, Christmas special, the doctor decides to go to a symphony and ends up at the original presentation of the Nutcracker. The show begins. But to the cast's surprise, the puppets come to life. The doctor is quick to help, remembering the fencing skills from the third and fourth doctor and helps to save the day. The play is spectacular for the audience, which is unaware that the fight is real. The writer of the play is horrified at the change to his production and the lifeless creatures coming to life. He hides behind a curtain and watches. He begins to notice the audience cheering and in a strange twist, the real story of the Nutcracker is never known as the story of the living puppets becomes a hit. Desperate to repeat the success of the first play, the cast attempts to convince the doctor to stay. They say how no one could stand in the place of the doctor. The doctor, all worn out and not at all interested, makes a one-off comment about soldiering and then leaves for the TARDIS, giving the writer of the play an idea to put a toy soldier in the doctor's place. Thus, the Nutcracker is forever rewritten. Grayscale Played from two weeks ago, Christmas idea, at the stroke of midnight GMT, Christmas Day, it clouds over and starts snowing everywhere on Earth, and it doesn't stop. As one might expect, an ecological crisis very quickly sets in. Constant cloud cover is causing the planet to cool, and the doctor and her friends must race to figure out who's controlling the weather and why. Turns out, it was some aliens who were trying to give humanity a Christmas present by fixing global warming as a prelude to making first contact, which they decide to put off after the doctor explains what an oopsie massively cooling the planet has been. <laughs> oh, that would fit in right with season 11. From Kareth Makura, an alien race embeds a coded sound frequency into the number one Christmas song of that year. This pacifies all who hear it, causing people to become smiling and unthinkingly happy as a prelude to an invasion. Peace on Earth as the title as the Doctor battles evil Christmas music. <laughs> From our friend Tyon Ranger three weeks ago, Who Xmas, Rose and Tenet crossover from another reality desperately looking for the Doctor. A regeneration of the Master has started to lay waste to their world by unleashing hordes of Cybermen and Daleks that he's collected over the centuries after developing a device that renders him in control, brainwashing and or slash something that gives him control over the technology. They serve him completely without question. He was able to plant them through the world as toys by shrinking them down to action figure size and they waited for an order on Christmas to come forth and conquer. Tenant and Rose take their new doctor back to help their fight. However, bringing the doctor was part of the master's plan so that he could gain control over the TARDIS using the same device. The TARDIS manages to resist for a while, but the strain on the tech gives the doctor an opening where she turns the Cybermen and Daleks against each other. The Master now has no support and is facing all the companions, Tenet and Jody. They're able to get the device and make all the pite size enemies turn into toys once and for all. Well done. Ashankar, here's a storyline for a Christmas episode. Children start to go missing early on Christmas Day after being beckoned downstairs by a green robed figure and opening a present wrapped in green paper. The doctor intercepts one young boy before he can finish opening the present. The doctor rips the wrapping off and peers into the box. This results in him and the child being teleported to a factory of an alien race who are using the children to make toys for their kids due to the kids' small hands and dexterity. The doctor goes on a mission to rescue the children and get them home before sunrise. The doctor delivers a present to each child he rescued apart from the child who got teleported with him. The doctor tells the child he will be right back. The TARDIS returns and a man 
man wearing a military uniform exits from the TARDIS. The doctor realized the boy's father was in the military and away from home, so brings him back for a few hours so the family can open their presents together. That was just a sample of hundreds of Christmas ideas. Thank you guys so much for sending them in. And BBC, see how easy that was? All you had to do was ask. And you know what? The nerdrotic comment section writes circles around your bad soap opera writers. And yeah, that was kind of mean. So I want to wish your bad soap opera writers, Jody Whitaker, Chris Chibnall, a very happy holidays. Merry Christmas. So if you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. I will be doing a live stream reading more Christmas ideas on Christmas Eve. And I want everybody to have a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Even if you don't celebrate it, I want you to have a good time. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Go to nerdrotic.com for our live stream schedule. And happy Christmas, everybody.